All right, hello, TFC community and natural footwear enthusiasts. Thank you for joining Michelle and I today. We're going to be reviewing the Revive by Bahe. We both have tried it. And she has um, the beautiful, I forget what the name of that color is. I have it in frost. Sandstone. Sandstone. And we're going to go through this shoe um, in a little longer form. So just to give you an idea of what we're doing, when we launch our partnership with the shoe brands, we um, usually will kick off that launching with a short review um, that covers the five Fs in really short, um, short, short form. And this is a longer form review where we get to dig in a little bit about the shoe and what we love about it, all the things we love about it, and then any feedback if the designers uh, want to hear our feedback about what what our wish list would be in newer iterations of the shoe. So again, this is the Revive. Bahe has two models. Um, this is the most natural shoe that they design. And it definitely fulfills the five Fs, but we would consider it to be like a mid-spectrum shoe. It's definitely more robust. So Michelle, you can show yours too. We, we love the toe box. It's definitely a wide roomy um, toe box with an upper, nice upper mesh that's very forgiving. So it's definitely foot shaped and we love that. And then it's zero drop, no ram from the heel to the toe, neutral, um, super flat, no arch support. Where it becomes a little bit more robust is in the cushioning and the flexibility. So it is flexible going this way, um, going up. It has a little more stability going backwards and it doesn't twist easily because of the shape of the rubber outsole. So if what you're looking for is something that you, where you need a little bit more stability, this is more um, mid-spectrum, um, and it's not quite as flexible as some of the other natural shoes that we review and that we wear. And then as far as the stack height goes, this has a 14 millimeter stack height, which means from the bottom of your sole to the ground. So you have a little bit more cushion in there. Um, if you take out the insole, then you will have 11 millimeters of cushion. So I think the Ultra Solstice has about 16 millimeters. So this is definitely not the most cushiony shoe in the natural footwear spectrum. And um, so it, it fulfills the five Fs, but it has a little bit more cushion and a little less flexibility if you're looking for something in that wheelhouse. So I wanted to turn it over to Michelle. Um, and then also just wanted to say really quick, um, a couple, just a couple of other notes about the design. This actually shoe is designed with a grounding technology, which means that they have um, they've test they've designed the shoe and tested the shoe and it is uh, it gives you the feeling of well it doesn't give you the feeling of being barefoot, but you definitely get the electrical charge from the um, from the earth when you're on earthy surfaces, sand, uh, ground, stone, and this silver thread stitching in here and whatever the, and the design that they use for the grounding technology makes it, and they test it with something called a continuity tester. So they stick one end of the um, testing device into the ground or whatever surface you're on. And then they, um, and then you put your thumb on the other end of the device and it will tell you if there is um, an electrical current. Uh, so, so, so this has been tested, um, and I will talk about that later. Anyway, so this has a grounding technology. So, if you love nerding out on grounding devices and life hack kind of grounding stuff, this is a very interesting shoe as well. Mm -hmm. So, I want to turn it over to you, Michelle, and tell us what you tell us everything that you um, experienced when you were working or playing in the shoe. Cool, thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, I was really looking forward to getting these because I was looking for some running shoes and knowing that um, Bahe, I say Bahe, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> um, they were specializing in running shoes 
And so that's what I've been using them for mainly. I've been on some long walks with them. Um, I have been running in them and also doing sort of workouts. Um, I feel like, firstly, I love that. I think they're really classy looking. I was really pleased to get these. I just thought they looked so clean and, um, yeah, classic and stylish and good looking too. So I have even worn them with, I've worn them out kind of quite smart as well because while they're clean still. Um, I like the colours. I think that also they do um, very natural earthy colours. I think there's four colours in total. There's a black, I don't know the proper, I should know the proper colours, but the sandstone, the more cream or white, um, a black and a green as well, a nice green one. This, um, one's, this one's called Frost. Frost, yes. Well, that's, that's a nice, I like that one. <laughs> um, yes, well, I like that. I also love the, the simplicity of the, there's reflective branding on the back. Just like you said, they, the design, they're really good designers. Like they, they have got little things that you probably wouldn't notice. Um, of course, the technology as well. Um, what else have I found with comfort wise? I, it was pleasantly, I, I enjoyed having the more cushioning, to be honest, um, because I'd done some barefoot running as well. It was almost like, oh, this is nice to have a little bit of cushioning. It's probably not something I'm going to wear all the time. I really like to go, um, I've been some, done some barefoot running this summer, but it was, it's, it's something I would pick up when I needed to. Um, and also for sometimes some of the, um, some of the training I do at the gym, I think they're, they're quite handy for um, for the athletic wear as well. I like laces. I know there's all sorts of different ways of fastening these days. I like the classic, I'm fine with laces. So um, that was fine, putting them on and off is fine. Um, the grounding, I, I've i got some grounding stuff in the house, like I've got a sheet and all of that. And it's one of those things where I love the idea of it. I haven't really looked into it hugely. I don't know if I'd buy a pair of trainers personally for, for the grounding, but I like the fact that that is the case. And I've seen, I went to meet um, Alex and Kashan in London this summer. Um, and so I saw, you know, the shoe on piece of technology that, that shows oh, how it is. And so it was nice to see that it was I think a lot of people are interested in that and of course if you're I like being barefoot but if you're um apparently it has the same kind of connection to the earth as as human skin so that's pretty cool um mm -hmm. I love the width I think that the probably the widest shoe I have so far I haven't tried an awful lot of barefoot shoes but they're the widest shoe I've tried and because when I get sweaty <laughs> my feet it's well I think most of us that our feet seem to kind of get bigger and so it's ideal I found that the root they're so roomy and the mesh is really breathable yeah so I've liked that part of it as well um I also like the fact that they're made the ethos of the company they're made from recycled plastic in fact I think this week there's all sorts of things I should have written that down no, I have it I think the um well the shoes are the laces are made from organic cotton and then some of this stuff, of course, of course, I I had it my list ready, and now it's not ready. Um, but I can, I think I can remember. So the the laces are organic. They're I can't remember specifically to what, but like there's natural rubber in the um, in the out in the sole. And I was looking up, you know, just like I don't even know what the difference is, but the natural rubber actually comes from plants and rubber trees uh like latex there's a process I, I don't know what the process is but and then there's a um, corn polymer so so there's like a high percentage of the materials come from either recycled uh like mesh poly poly mesh and then there's some corn polymers in there some natural rubber the organic cotton um, i think sugar as well so yeah sugar cane um, there's some really cool stuff going on with sugarcane. And I think that that, you know, nothing, it's not perfect, but the fact that you, industry is like imperfect, right? So the fact that, um, and we like the stories of ethos and like ethical materials and sourcing. And it's nothing that I can or can't verify, but I will tell you that when I put the shoe on, Michelle, there is like, you can tell that it's thoughtfully designed. I mean, it's a very high quality 
shoe made by a small company and the design is is pretty impeccable as far as materials go i think so anyway i i just wanted to yeah i wanted to jump on that the material wagon because i really i can tell compared to a lot of the other natural shoes that i wear that this that the materials are are feel nicer on my feet you know Yes, it feels high, like you say, high quality. Yeah. And it, it does. It feels like so much thought has gone into it. Yeah. And, um, even to the anti-clog tread, which I never really thought, you know, but it is, you know, when you get a stone in your, in the bottom of, of some tread and it's like, this is designed not to do that. And I just think, oh, yeah. that's cool. Um, and also, yeah, I haven't found them slippery either. Really good grip, which is um, in the rain. We've had so much rain here. So that's a good thing as well, especially when running on like slippery leaves. So um, yeah, I think, oh, there's also a natural probiotic odor treatment inside. So I haven't, I don't know. I'm a bit of a I kind of a bit of a sucker sometimes for these things. I just think that's so good. <laughs> you know, I don't wear socks, really. Oh, no, me neither. And so um, some shoes can go in the in the washing machine, I think. Um, but these ones I wouldn't put in. But they've got like an odor treatment in, which is really handy. Not that I get really smelly feet, but it is. Um, I don't know how that works, but it sounds good. Um, and, yeah, I use... So it's a tricky one because it's, um, I love the fact that you can take, so I quite like a sole that you can remove. Um, but for me, I prefer right, to. Can I interrupt you? Can we do a little experiment? I don't know if you can, could you, do you have your, um, could you stand on this insole? Because when you said that this is the widest shoe toe box so far, like this is the first insole that I've taken out of a shoe and put my bare feet on. Right. And remember like we did that little experiment where the pinky toe, when you stand on it, the pinky toe kind of goes over, even in some of our natural foot-shaped shoes. Mm -hmm. This one does not do that. Like it's truly, you could see that it's truly, I feel like this is the most anatomically shaped foot box of a closed-toed shoe that I have so far. So I just wonder if you would stand, could, or maybe I can do it. Yeah, you do yeah. it. I'll, I'll do it. it. I'll I'll do it. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can put my, Mm. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can see this, but so when I stand on, can you, can you see it? Yeah. But you can see here that there's still like my, my toes are pretty wide and the, the toes do not go outside as much as I try to splay my toes. It, it, the pinky toe doesn't go over the outer edge of the insole. So I, I just love that because it, I think that really does illustrate how much room there is in the toe box. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got the same here. I, I'm because I've done the same sort of thing as you know on other insoles, and I'm thinking, well, my literally my little toe just hangs right over the edge. But I really do have to stretch them on on this one, which is um really good yeah so yeah so any other notes um just removable sole laces no i think that's most of it the, pr the price um is i feel like it's not the cheapest out there but it's it's it it's it goes head to head with a lot of the others sort of a yeah. simple price range but is this 139 us dollars it's 149 pounds, which will be at 165 ish dollars, probably maybe 170. Let me, I would just want to check, but yeah. 100, well, 149 on the website earlier, but um, okay. I think that's about 165 dollars, maybe. Um, but I feel like it's a it's a classy brand and it's niched with the the grounding. You know, I can I think it's good to be high value in a way, maybe. Um, because they're quite well, it is a higher quality shoe. I paid I paid one hundred and forty dollars U.S. dollars for a shoe that was much less qual quality materials than this. Um, so even though it is on the more expensive side, but I think it's it's a value that's worth it. I feel like these I, I won't we'll have to check back in a couple months. I'm like you, like I don't wear them a lot. Um, because I prefer to, 
I prefer to be barefoot most of the time, but I do wear these out and about like for, for going places because they look like a nice shoe mm -hmm. um, where I'm just wearing regular clothes or whatever. But I also like wearing these when I need a break from, um, you know, from, from high intensity barefoot training or I, I, and, and I think Mac and Jim, I like to hear from them, but they played tennis in these and they really liked them so they compared them to like the ultra solstice which i think they usually play tennis in but this has a less cushion but i feel like this if you are play racket sports or you play sports this might be a good one for you i couldn't wear this for sports like that because i need to be able to have a lot of flexibility twisting wise and i need a lot less cushion but if you if you want that extra cushion it's just a few millimeters extra and then the one thing I wanted to say about the, like at first when I was thinking about the grounding, okay, so I, I just, I don't know, my brain is like, well, why do I want to have grounding technology when I could just take off my shoes and socks and go outside barefoot, right? But then Michelle, I put them on and they feel, and they just feel nice, you know, like, and so I think that I might not be like as, as tuned in to like, to, I mean, it definitely doesn't feel like I'm barefoot on the grass, right? But I will say that my feet feel really nice in these, mm -hmm. and I enjoy wearing them when I'm when they're on. I'm like, wow, they're very pleasant to wear, you know. So like when I go for a long walk, or when I'm on when I'm on like concrete, unforgiving concrete surfaces, then this is it's just really nice to have the that extra cushion, and I really love the toe box. I love the, um, un, I love the mesh sheet. This is really forgiving, but it's also super high quality mesh. And so my foot being barefoot in there doesn't feel like I'm just in hard plastic, which some of the shoes I wear mm -hmm. or I, I go to put on, have that feeling. Yeah. Um, so I really appreciate that. And then, you know, like one of the things I thought this, this shoe would be good for, like sometimes we hear from people who are like, are trying to heal from like plantar fasciitis or like if you have some type of flare up of, of foot injury and you just need to have the relief um, from not, you know, not being barefoot all the time, it seems like this is a really good shoe for mm -hmm. uh, temporary relief from like, you know, barefoot training and such. Yeah. And so anyway, the point about the grounding that I wanted to say was that I think I can notice a difference, but I'm not super tuned in but I do notice that it's like a very pleasant kind of neutral feeling where, where, where other shoes that I wear that have like a hard rubber on the bottom, a lot less cushion. I'm just very aware of my feet in the rubbery kind of like plasticky feeling shoes. Mm -hmm. I don't, that's the only way I can describe it. So I really like natural, more natural materials when possible. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. That your words were, you know, the pleasant experience. That's it is nice to be able to put your feet in there. And I know there's all sorts of schools of thought around the whole grounding thing, anyway. But I'm kind of a big believer in placebo as well. You know, like I, I just think um, I've seen the the science behind it. Like it looks completely legit that, that when your feet are in these shoes, it, they're grounded to the earth. Um, and I suppose that is going to have an effect on, I know on the website it mentions about improved sleep. You know, if we're wearing, if you're either barefoot or in these, so you're grounded most of the time, it can have a lo whole host of uh, health benefits. But um, I think that's a bonus. You know, I think it's yeah. a real bonus to have on, on this particular shoe. And I love the fact they're water resistant as well. It's just, you know, they don't get absolutely soaked. I've been out in, um, they're not actually that dirty either. I've been out in a few, a few yeah, wet ones too. with them. Oh. Me too. Um, so you wear them for you wear them for running, um, and you wear them for going out. Do yeah, I I've been around, around, the lake, around the lake, around the lake with them, um, about an hour walk, um, and some runs. Not long, necessarily long runs, mm -hmm. um, and also for uh, skipping. You know, doing some yes outs Rope as well. Skipping. So that's one of the things that I've been using them for. So I mostly walk in them. Um, I've done I've done some short runs in them, and they're they're fine. I, I guess I I guess I prefer running in something with less cushion, so or let, where I can get a more of a feel of the ground. So I I'm, I prefer to run closer to barefoot than not. 
Um, but I, and I have also started jumping rope. So, so rope training, and I've been practicing barefoot, but when I need a break and from that barefoot jumping, I, I go to these because they're just really nice. They're just the right amount of cushion where you can get a little relief and still um, feel like you're in a natural shoe. So that's really good. And then I just walk. I mean, I, when I when my feet need a break, I use those for walking. They are my go-to for um, taking a break from barefoot walks. Yeah, I, I think they'd be brilliant for people who, um, you know, because a lot of people haven't yet made a transition with shoes. There's a lot of friends, that, my friends, that don't have any barefoot shoes. And I think, um, especially if they're active, this could be an, just an ideal way of... Um, mm -hmm you know, working towards it because it's literally, there's, there's so many, so much good stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then I think another, what, what I'm going to do to try to get some of my family members, my older family members who wouldn't necessarily move to a natural shoe right away with less cushioning. I think this is a really great, like my father-in-law would really, I think, feel good in this shoe. There's enough cushioning, but it just gives the, you know, and it looks, it lo doesn't look like, um, it's inconspicuous in the way of like natural footwear goes like my parents and my in-laws probably would see this and not think of it as like a weird shoe, you know? <laughs> so I think that I, I think I'm going to try and um, get, I'm going to see what they think over the holidays. What about, what about your, on your wish list of what would be different? What would you, what would you say? Well, what I know, um, what I also love about the guys that founded Bahay Running is um, they are really open to feedback as well. You know, they're really excited about this. And um, although it's not just as easy as like ch changing, uh, I think you spoke with Nick about that. It's, you can't just check. Not many people realize what goes into something like this. And um, so Alex has been doing this most of his life and is so... Uh, we joke because I say about I'm being a foot, I'm a foot nerd and he's a shoe nerd, you know, that they're, they're really particular with the design. He knows how to tweak shoes and how about it. So I'm excited to give a little bit of feedback, bearing in mind my feet are unique. Everyone's different. Um, my one thing I did struggle with was the volume with these. So I didn't realize that volume was really a thing. Um, I've had to kind of learn about it, but it seems that I might have, would it mean I've got low volume feet mm -hmm. low volume feet so here and i think i had the same with my brooks trainer so normal running trainers i used to kind of go to the running shop and get brooks or whatever and they kind of dig in my ankles i'd always run through the blisters that would just appear and then just um um but that that might be why and so the same here it kind of pushes up on my ankle um on my ankle a little bit and mm -hmm. i feel like especially after say an hour's walk i had to almost just twist my feet were fine feet were yeah. great but it was like my ankles just needed to yeah you're not getting as much you're not getting as much motion through your ankles because the material comes up too high around the ankle yeah because of your lower volume foot yeah and that's and that is that was my main thing with my feet mm -hmm. um and I think it was uncomfortable after the whole year. I mean, this year has been a complete transition for me. And so to then put them on and be and have feel a little bit constricted around my ankle was more um, of a surprise. But I think that's because I am I am a barefoot person most of the time. So um, it was just a felt. Considering we call them minimalist shoes, it just didn't feel that minimal around my ankles. And yeah. that was that's that was the. Um, the main thing for me really yeah i think my feedback is um is along the same lines i mean we're similar in the sense that we prefer to have as little shoe on our feet as possible mm -hmm. but i would be curious to know okay so my foot i think i have a high volume foot i didn't have the same issue around the ankle as you and and Anya spoke about this too. So this shoe is designed for somebody who probably has like a medium to high volume foot. This probably wouldn't work for you if you have a low volume foot. If you don't know what that means, I highly suggest you go to Anya Jensen's um, website and she does brilliant, thorough discussion of um, 
foot volume and foot shape. And it really would, if you're spending money on natural shoes, it would really be do you well to go there and learn about your feet. And she just does a great job. Nobody does it better than her, I think, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So, um, so my foot, it has a higher volume. I didn't have the same issue around the ankle, but it was a lot of shoe. It is a lot of shoe. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would be curious. I love this shoe as it is, but I would be curious maybe instead of 14 millimeters, take out the insole 11 millimeters of cushion or stack height. I would be interested to know like what nine millimeters would feel like mm -hmm. and just all around less material, like something just a little bit more, more glove-like. But I think if I had to choose one thing and I know it's not easy um, for changes in shoe design, I would say, I would want to know what this particular shoe feels like with less cushion between seven and nine millimeters, because you would still have a little extra, but not quite so much. Yeah, I, I feel like that, what you just said, will hit two Fs for me, because it will hit hit the whole um, feel, <laughs> you know, the less cushioning, feel the ground a lot more, but it would it would make them more flexible yeah. as well. No, because because it's fine this way. Um, yeah. That's the flexibility is limited because of the the thicker yeah. sole, I think. So yeah, I think the word minimal springs to mind, like minimal yeah. shoe, just less, less shoe, less shoe. <laughs> yeah. That would be. It's kind of an oxymoron in my brain. Like I have resistance to the grounding technology because I'm far from the ground, you know, than I usually am when I'm in less stack height yeah and i would be curious to see what if the grounding technology was in there but there was less cushioning like what experience what would that experience be like you know um yeah so that's that's my feedback and i think um any closing remarks or anything you want to add and we'll wrap it up no well no i don't think so um I, I just like what they're about and I'm excited. I'm glad that they've made this shoe, you know, because they've they've made a normal they um they have one line of normal running shoes. I say normal, you know. Um but they've introduced this and so I'm I'm pleased and I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in the future with them. Me too. And I think it's very unique that they have two designs and that the two designs are complete opposite of each other you know like i think it's very interesting that they have like a traditional running shoe which i think has probably all the traditional features and then they have the and then they've introduced this more natural shoe and i just i agree with you i'm really i think the company is super super high quality company small I mean, it's so great that you met them in person. I really think that their designs and their intention is just really human and lovely. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're trying to really sort of subtly integrate into nature and encourage people to get outside and run and play. And um, I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier about supporting them. So I'm really glad that they're, um, that we're partnering with them and we just want to thank you guys because we we love you <laughs> yeah we do. okay now that i said i love bahe i'm gonna hang up i'm gonna stop recording thank you for listening friends we'll catch you in the next review <laughs>